let's look at how to install Python on your Mac. The simplest way will be just go to python.org website and download the installer. But this is not what I would recommend. Instead, I would recommend that you install Python using some type of virtual environment manager. So that's what we're going to look at today. And one of the most popular environment manager is called Anaconda, or in short, just Conda. Why would we use another tool to manage our development environment when instead we can just simply install Python? Well, if you ever try to run some uh, machine learning project code that you downloaded, say, from GitHub, then you know that they all have very specific requirements for dependency, starting with Python. The latest Python version is 3.12, but not all projects you find online support Python 3.12 versions yet. For instance, I'm on the GitHub page of Stable Diffusion Web UI, which is one of the most popular Stable Diffusion projects. It has 133k stars. And if you try to install this on your own computer, let's say what requirements they have here. So I'm using Mac, but just as an example, here's an instruction for automatic installation on Windows. It's asking you to install Python 3.10.6 version. Newer version of Python does not support Torch. So I think that's a good example. So you have to be very specific in installing Python as well as other dependencies. And if you only have a single Python installation, this will become very difficult to manage pretty quickly. So Conda lets you create virtual environment so that you can install multiple different versions of Python and there won't be any conflict among those projects. Not only that, it also let you manage different versions of dependencies. Okay, so we'll use Anaconda to manage different Python installations. So there are mainly two different flavors of Conda, and this page describes the difference between them. So Anaconda distribution comes with 250 plus packages, and Miniconda less than 70. So you might think, hmm, maybe having more packages available would be better. But the problem is install space required is huge, about 4.4 gigabytes, whereas Miniconda only requires 480 megabytes of space. And if you need any extra packages that are not included in Miniconda, you can always install them manually. So I would suggest that you go with Miniconda. And here I am on the page for installing Miniconda. So you just need to download .pkg installer and just go through the steps. Or if you prefer to install using command line or the terminal, you can also do it as well. I will leave the links to these installation pages down in the description. So once you have installed Miniconda, restart your terminal, and then let's make sure that the Conda is properly installed. So you can run the command Conda list. And these are the packages that were installed with your mini conda. If you somehow see a message like command not found, then you need to double check your installation. And don't forget to restart the terminal before you run the conda command for the first time. And when you install conda, it comes with sort of default environment, which is called base. So in some cases, you may have to manually activate. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to type in conda activate, meaning I'm going to activate this virtual environment called base. Then you will notice something has changed. If you look at the prompts in your terminal, then you will see this base is now added, which indicates that you are currently running the base conda environment. In here, we can check what version of Python is installed in this base environment. In my case, it comes with Python 3.12.3. Your version might be a little different. And whatever version you have in the base environment, it doesn't really matter because you rarely work with the base environment. Instead, whenever you start a new project, then you will want to create a new environment. So let's create a new environment. The command for creating a new environment is conda create. And then we give it a name for this. 
let's call it maybe stable diffusion because I want to uh, run some stable diffusion projects with this environment. And after naming your environment, then you can also specify which Python version you want to install. And here I want to try 3.11. Hit return and just hit enter or Y to proceed. The environment is now created. And to activate this environment, use this command conda activate and the name of your environment, stable diffusion. And also to deactivate an active environment, use conda deactivate. So I'm still using base. So let's activate stable diffusion environment. Conda activate stable diffusion. And notice the text in between the parentheses has now changed from base to stable diffusion. So when I check the Python version of this environment, it is now 3.11.9. If you recall, the Python version of the base environment was Python 3.12.3, .3, and now it's 3.11.9. So Conda is now managing these different environments with different Python versions. If you want to check the list of all your environments, then Conda and list, then you will see the list of all the environments you have. In my case, I only have base and stable diffusion. And anytime you want to switch between them, then conda activate and the name of the environment you want to use. So I want to go back to base or go back to stable diffusion. Okay, so now we are using the stable diffusion environment, use Python version 3.11. Then what can we do with this? Well, we can install other Python packages in this environment. So for instance, I want to install a package called JupyterLab. This package lets me use Python in a notebook setting, just like Google Colab. So let me run this command, conda install JupyterLab. I'm going to proceed. It's going to download all the dependencies that are necessary to run the JupyterLab. And it's all done. And then I can start Jupyter server with Jupyter space lab command. And then you will see the browser automatically opens. And then I can use Jupyter lab notebook just like this. Let me come back to my terminal. And if you want to stop the server, hit command C and hit yes. So anytime you want to run this Jupyter notebook, just run Jupyter space lab command. So let me try to go back to my base environment by running conda activate base. Then if I try to run Jupyter lab here, it says command not found because Jupyter package was installed for the stable diffusion environment. And the base environment doesn't have that. So this way, you can manage those dependencies and packages per environment, which is very convenient. And when you're done using the environment and you no longer need it, you can delete the environment along with all the dependencies that were installed in it. First, you will have to deactivate that environment and then run this command. Conda remove name of the environment and all. And I will proceed. I'm going to hit yes again. And when I check the list of environments, and now I only have a single base environment here. And now, again, if you want to create a new environment, just simply use this command conda create name of the environment. Let's say maybe comfy, comfy UI, and then the Python version that you want to use with it. So here, let me use. 3.12. And that's the basics of using Conda to manage your Python project. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.